the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. From the book of Isaiah. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall exult in my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. One week ago, we celebrated the birth of Jesus Christ, and one of the traditional collects for that grace, great feast reads, O God, who makes us glad with the yearly remembrance of the birth of your only Son, Jesus Christ. Now, in many respects, that collect summarizes what Christmas and this New Year's Day celebration is meant to be to make us glad, to make us rejoice with the remembrance of the coming of Jesus. To make us glad, to make us rejoice because Christ has come again into our hearts and lives. Now, rejoicing. Rejoicing is a very strange concept. Because rejoicing is kind of a matter of choice. It isn't just a given. But many people we talk to today, many people who might have read this collect, might find, might find it really, really hard in this day and age to rejoice about anything. Because maybe the circumstances of their lives and the circumstances of your lives may be such that it feels as though in your mind and in your life today that rejoicing is kind of an impossible thing to do. Just can't get my mind and life around that concept of being exultant, being rejoicing. And maybe that's what the Prince of Darkness would like us to believe. You know, nothing pleases the devil more than a lot of defeated and sad-faced Christians. Now you'd think after Christmas we'd all be on a high. There are wonderful people that go around stomping with their face dejected, complaining, I spent too much over Christmas, my grandkids never appreciated any of the gifts I had to cook for all my family, they didn't help me, I really didn't feel that well, and before you knew it everything was over and I was so exhausted. I really couldn't enjoy anything. And now here I am on New Year's Day because I guess I didn't go out partying last night, so I guess let me come up, go get up and go to 10 o'clock service. Not that you guys don't have a life, but I mean, here we are, 10 o'clock, 15 of us out of a church of how many? This is an incredibly big congregation. So congratulations, I'm not sure this is gonna get you to heaven, but it might get you one step up the ladder of salvation, having come here on New Year's Day. But Still, there's so many people with glum faces, downtrodden countenances. You know that prince of darkness, that monkey on our back, so to speak? The devil loves to see this in Christians at this wonderful time of the year when we should be rejoicing. Now, the world will never believe in happiness, will never believe in Jesus Christ, if his disciples go around choosing to be glum instead of rejoicing. Now, this doesn't mean that we have to have this pretension that everything is great and everything is okay, especially around this time of year when we know that so many tragedies have befallen our families or our children, maybe our marriages. So many tragedies have befallen our nation and the nations around the world. So many people are depressed, spent out, and broke, and have very little joy for the new year to come. We understand that. So maybe we might get away with pretending this for a while, but you know, sooner or later, reality will take over, and we will have to face the dark side of things. But that's not that unusual. Think back about Mary and Joseph at this time. Mary and Joseph, amidst the joy and the exultation of the angels and the shepherds 
of the newborn king, Mary and Joseph had to face a dark side of life as they spent their days in Bethlehem because they knew that Herod was going to try to kill their infant son. That's kind of the dark side of a newborn and a mother and a father. So plans had to be made in a very realistic way to get that child out of harm's way. And just this week, December 28th, the church observed Holy Innocence Day, remembering the little children, the firstborn who were killed by that wicked Herod, that tyrant's paranoid cruelty. Now, Mary and Joseph were not afraid to look at the dark side of things, but that did not keep them from rejoicing in what God had done what God had given them, what God was doing for their lives. The prophet Isaiah says, I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. Now, whatever rejoicing we do in the Lord will certainly stand us in good stead. It will drive away much of that false negativity we so easily accumulate, especially around the holidays. How many people do you know hate holidays? They just can't go through the holidays with bad past memories. There's so much negativity. A lot of people go on cruises for the holidays to get away from the family and everything. A lot of people just lock themselves in their rooms, in their homes. They don't go out for anything. And they accumulate so much personal negativity around themselves. But rejoicing in the Lord, as the prophet has told us, will banish all of this negativity. It will banish so many of the obstacles which might lie ahead for you and for me in 2014. It will quicken our awareness of the love that has been shown to us and is being shown each and every day. You know, if we really believe that God really loves us, that he truly cares for us, then that is a great joy for rejoicing in itself. How many people can say, I am truly loved, without any strings attached? Our wives and our husbands and our children and our grandchildren, of course, they all love us. Sometimes the grandchildren have larger purse strings tied to our wallets than we would wish. But we always feel that there are strings attached to that wonderful gift of love. But Christ's love for us at this time is freely given. What a great cause for rejoicing. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. As this new year begins, I would ask that you would consider choosing joy. I would ask that you consider prayerfully to rejoice, to be glad, to choose happiness, to recount your blessings, and to give thanks for them again and again and again. And as you prepare to experience 2014, make that vital choice to rejoice in the Lord. You know, you have a lot of power to choose. We know that God gave us our free will, but sometimes we don't understand that. We say, well, <clears throat> I'm locked into this situation. You don't understand, I can't choose joy. You don't walk my journey. If you did, you would not be joyful. You have the power in yourselves, whatever your circumstances are, to choose joy. Why not choose joy? Jesus has promised not only to go into the new year with you, but to go through the new year with you and to stay with you all the days to come. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall exult in my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. Happy New Year to each and every one of you and to those you love.